Right, I guess we'll just get the ball rolling then. Um, I wanted to do a quick update video uh, about my uh, current project. I just left a bit of a, a bit of a teaser back in January about uh, working on a project again, so I thought I'd uh, fill those the gaps in and tell you how I've been doing with that. So I am working on uh, map work, which was my web-based 2D tile map editor that I uh, created for my uh, dissertation. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the goals of that project, uh, some of the progress and things to come. So, yep. So what really is the main goal of the project? To put it simply, it's to bring map work into a state where I can continue the development and add new features using modern web development technologies. See, when I built that project, uh, it was a long time ago, it was uh, 2012, 2013, and uh, the whole thing's written with uh, see, like JavaScript, CSS, HTML, uh, HTML canvas, and then also there's just a load of jQuery. Uh, I had to kind of hand rolled all the UI elements, and now if I were to be, if I was rewriting it, I'd probably use a, a UI uh, framework, or rather a front end framework such as React or Vue or Angular. Uh, so I kind of want to revisit the project for those reasons. There wasn't a really good deployment process for the project and things have moved on. Uh, you know, you can take advantage of uh, really new JavaScript features before they're uh, native in the browser now with things like Babel, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll further elaborate on that. So. so what steps have I taken to achieve the goal of modernizing my work? Well, the first thing I did was put a plan together to modernize the app, the map work modernization project. Essentially, I got a nice big project board on GitHub, and I just put all the things that I wanted to do to modernize the app. So one of my goals was to ease deployment of the app before there was it, it was a completely manual deployment process. Uh, I decided to add Jenkins to automate my builds, add a bundler to uh, package all of my code and assets together uh, in a smaller bundle to make it formant when it was uh, deployed. Um, using GitHub webhooks so that when a push was done to a repository or a branch, uh, that check, that webhook would then fire off to Jenkins and then would automate the build process. And then it would create some kind of an artifact, which I would store on something like S3 or some other kind of uh, file storage, you know, managed file storage medium. Um, so that, that was the idea of that. Um, to ease development, I wanted to add Babel to the project so that I could use modern language features in JavaScript, uh, such as those from ES6 and ES7. Um, JavaScript is kind of an evolving spec, uh, and sometimes the specs can jump ahead of the current browser implementations. And you've also got to account for for people who just don't upgrade their browsers. Um, you don't want to, you know, be limited to the uh, browser features that are only uh, available, you know. Why, like widespread, so so the idea there is to is to to bring those features to the to to, to everyone without uh, you know limiting my uh, reach or making it harder on myself for uh, development. Updating the code base to ES6. Now this is really important. I when I wrote my JavaScript back in 2012, 2013, like I, I was using essentially ES3 standard code that would work in all the browsers. One thing that I uh, laid out very clearly was that I wanted that the uh, map work to work in all of the bra the modern modern builds of the browser. So that was Chrome at the time, IE9, um, Firefox, Opera, uh, and Safari. I think it was Safari for Windows I was testing on, which is insane, I think about it now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted all those uh, those browsers to be supported. And that's quite hard to do, so I had to use some pretty, uh, you know, primitive JavaScript to get all that to work. Um, lots of polyfills and all kind of stuff. Um, these days, I'm not constrained by that. Uh, like I said, you can use things like uh, Babel, add them to the build process, and they can transpile your code from nice modern ES7, you know, bleeding edge stuff, to uh, to to uh, ES5 code that basically all modern browsers and then even some slightly older browsers support so without sacrificing you know using new features so so that was another aim of the project uh, another thing that uh, completely blew over my mind was that i didn't use any uh, node or npm back in back in 2012 this project was actually a dotnet project that didn't have any dotnet in it i just used dotnet asp.net.net mvc 
uh, for the uh, project structure, like the skeleton. And also I used uh, Visual Studio Code's IIS server, I think it was. So um, yeah, I haven't even thought about using Node, but uh, we're going to add, oh, I've added Node and NPM, so we can bring in lots of really good packages and uh, use like, you know, bundlers and web servers and everything from there, so that's, so that's good. Adding confidence around the app for major changes are implemented. Hands up, I did not write unit tests for uh, map work when I wrote it back in 2012 and 2013. I, uh, I didn't write any tests. I, uh, they don't teach you to write tests in uh, university. Um, all I ever used to hear was people saying, maybe we should implement some unit tests. And it never actually happened. So I, uh, I you know, I was kind of complacent. I didn't, didn't write unit tests for the project. Kind of wish I did. It would have been a valuable learning experience. But uh, I've righted that wrong now. And I've implemented, uh, lo well, I've written lots and lots of tests. I've used Jest as my uh, test framework because it's really good. Jest is a really good uh, test runner. So yeah, I've written a uh, unit test around all the new ES6 classes that have been converted and the canvas rendering code. But uh, I purposely didn't add tests around the old UI code because that old UI code is written with jQuery event handlers, which I'm just going to completely get rid of. I'm going to write a brand new UI for the project. Initially, it's going to look exactly like the old UI, but it's going to be written in a, in a modern framework such as React, Vue, Angular, one of those. And uh, also another aim was to decide on a front-end library or framework to replace the antiquated jQuery interface. What problems did I encounter? Well, I did run into a few issues, um, so this is why this video is worth uh, making. Jenkins took a long time to figure out. Uh, documentation is very scattered around the internet. It took a lot of guesswork to get a Jenkins file that did everything that I needed it to do. Build the app, run the tests, and then deploy the thing to S3. That took a long time. I had to do a lot of digging. It took a lot of time adding unit tests around the canvas rendering code. I had to do a lot of refactoring of the code to make it easier to unit test. Like, it took a long time. Um, and <laughs> I had to have a lot of, like, short, uh, sort of bursts of, uh, of working on the tests uh, and then going away and then coming back. Uh, like, you couldn't do this in one sitting. It took, it took quite a while. <laughs> but I'm pleased to report the tests are done now. The last thing that I uh, had struggled quite quite a lot with was uh, selecting a front-end framework to build the UI. I actually haven't done that yet. I'm stuck. <laughs> and I'm uh, going to do a lot of uh, spike tasks, so go a little bit off the beaten track of the uh, project board that I set up, and just explore using different branches with different technologies just to see which one uh, like is the best fit for this. Um, so I'm at the very least going to build a prototype and view and I'm going to build a prototype in React. So these are the two frameworks that I'm going to write them in. Depending on how well those go, you know, the might I might write an Angular one, but I've used Angular, like uh, modern Angular. Well, I know, I mean, I, I, my job, I uh, use uh, Angular 1, 1.5 onwards. Uh, but uh, having used modern Angular, I feel like uh, maybe you and React might be a better fit. But I need to actually write some code find this out for myself using the project, see what works best, so there is that. So yeah, I'm going to build prototypes. I might use web components. I don't know a lot about those, but there's been a lot of talk about that in uh, some circles I'm in, uh, saying that it's good. Uh, I need to investigate that. Yeah, so essentially, the easiest pro uh, pro framework to work with that offers the most functionality and is just is the right fit for the project. This is going to be the one that wins, and it will be integrated into the master Git branch. So where am I now with the project? That's uh, an important question to ask. It's an important question for, to ask myself and also for everybody out there to ask as well. So um, I'm about 75% complete on this particular project, the modernization project. Um, I feel like I need to have a quite slight pivot in strategy to complete the last 25% and that is to choose the front-end framework and implement it in that new framework. That's going to take a little bit of figuring out. That's clean cutters, taking a task off a board and then getting it done. I, I like I need to do some research. So that's where I am with the project right now. What will I do next once the modernization project's finished? That's a little bit of an open book, but I do have some ideas. Because I'm doing the modernization project to enable uh, you know new features um, of the project. 
The project's currently open source as well, it's uh, on GitHub, so you know, in the future I could open it up to uh, to more pull requests and such. Um, but yeah, so once the map work project is on a more solid footing, I'm going to do several more projects in order to add the new features to the app. Some of these features include making the app export maps and bundles, so that's the uh, assets and map files, in, a widely used, in more widely used formats. So previously when I uh, wrote the project for uh, my dissertation, it would actually output a JSON file with a set of images and would put them into a zip file. That required going to the server and basically throwing all the uh, all the, the front end uh, stuff that's been generated by by the app, and then getting it right back as a bundle and a zip file. Now, I, I believe, having looked at some libraries, that I can do most of this on the front end now. I don't need to build an API layer for that. However, that's not to say that there won't be a, an API layer in the future once I've got a nice solid front end uh, foundation going there. So that's something to think about. New editor tools. I really want to add uh, to the editing capabilities of Mapwork, the uh, canvas-based editor uh, editing environment uh, was, you know, one of the exciting parts of writing this project. But I was constrained by time because of university. So some of the ideas that come to mind are adding custom brushes, things like you know, in different shapes and different sizes, um, grid rulers so that you can see which tile you're actually editing in the map when you uh, navigate along at that. It's kind of a, a missed feature um, and loading of maps and assets so uh, that can be extended out to loading locally uh, via the file system or look maybe loading from a remote location my focus I think will be to implement local saving and loading so that at least the tool is useful to people you know who are using it uh, uh, locally rather than having to you know rely on their uh, files being in the cloud, that's another another story. Desktop and progressive web app support as well, so that you can have the app in maybe a its own window instead of a, like on the desktop as like a you know like a native app, but not uh, not in the browser. That's another option, so you can edit your uh, stuff offline potentially and and out of the browser. One thing that would be really good is to take you know this the whole local editing of a uh, map work and and transplant it into something like an Electron app or just a progressive web app uh, and then allow the user to do all the editing and loading and saving locally. That would be pretty good. Uh, but then also have the option to use it in the browser as well uh, when they're on the go. So, And I really want to focus on making the, the tool useful for rich editing of maps, tile maps, and then being able to get that map out in, in, in lots of uh, useful formats. That's my goal. So I've done quite a lot of work on map work since Christmas, um, but I've had a little bit of a mental block because of the of being able to unable to decide which front end framework to use for the UI. I'm attempting to break that mental block by doing some prototyping. So I'll make another video when that decision's made, and I have some prototypes to show. Hopefully, I'll have made a decision by that point, and I'll have something that we can uh, <laughs> we can mull over. So yeah, so that's where I'm on that. Uh, Hello, it's now magically the next day. That's why my clothes have changed. I just wanted to add to the end of the video that I'm uh, really grateful for everybody who watches and subscribes. And um, I have some more projects in the pipeline as well. I'd really like to do some more in-depth videos about each thing that I'm doing for the Mapboy project. I know this one was a bit of like a talky heavy one, but I just had to make it to show an overall summary of what I'm doing. The idea is I want to make some videos to show the specific things like, you know, like how you write a Jenkins file, um, you write tests and um, all that kind of good stuff so so i will do some more in-depth video about that and some more educational videos and hopefully as well soon i'll be able to give you an update on on the project so that's all i want to say so have a nice day everybody and look forward to seeing you in the next one